Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video today, we're going to be reviewing day number three of Tampa Bay Buccaneers OTAs. This is being recorded on May 29th at night. Day number three of Buccaneers OTAs occurred on May 27th. So I am a couple of days late to this party, but I did still want to get my thoughts out, make a video about this, and talk about some of the guys who did look good on day number three of the Buccaneers OTA. So I've got some notes here uh, from Buccaneers.com and some other various sources of players who did look good. So first things first, we're actually going to talk about a couple of pass rushers, Quentin Bell and Elijah Ponder both looked good in pass rushing drills, winning some sort of competition that Larry Foote had concocted, if you will, during that practice on May 27th. Quentin Bell and Elijah Ponder both looked good, which is good news for both those guys. Elijah Ponder, an undrafted guy, coming in here trying to find his mark, maybe on special teams, maybe he's a backup, maybe he'll be a practice squad guy. But regardless, you know, winning a pass rushing competition might not sound like a big deal, but it showcased cases his pass rushing abilities and what he can do against some of his fellow players so it was good for him to get that and Quentin Bell you know he's been with the team for a couple of years now has done some pretty interesting things I mean he even played in the Super Bowl I believe he had a half sack in the Super Bowl so congratulations to him for doing well in this competition he's also competing for a special team spot for a backup pass rushing spot and you know maybe a practice squad spot so Overall, very good for both those guys to get this opportunity, make the most of that opportunity, and win this competition that was held. Another edge rusher who did very good for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was Anthony Nelson, a player that we had talked about in a previous video to keep an eye on in these OTAs. And hey, look at that. It's paying off. Anthony Nelson, he had a batted pass at the line of scrimmage. Makes sense. The dude has got a very long, tall frame. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense as to why Anthony Nelson can do that. He's got that ability and he's done that uh, during the very limited snaps that we've seen him in years past. But to take it a step further, this is a quote from Larry Foote when talking about Anthony Nelson. He says, the problem is he has two alpha males in front of him, so the snap count is limited for him. That's alluding to Shaq Barrett and Jason Pierre-Paul. Of course, those guys never want to come off the field. And I know what people are going to say. Oh, what about Joe Tryon? Anthony Nelson's already beaten Joe Tryon for that third spot. No, Larry Foote has not seen Joe Tryon as an edge rusher yet. And, uh, you know, Joe Tryon hasn't been able to showcase what he can do as an edge rusher yet. So that's why Larry Foote said what he said there. I'm sure when Joe Tryon gets in to that mix, it's going to be even harder potentially to get some snaps for Anthony Nelson, but he did have some flashes there in that practice on May 27th, and he even got a little bit of praise from Larry Foote, so that's all positive things. Good job to Anthony Nelson. Nate Brooks had a big-time interception in this practice, and the players and even the coaches were giving him a lot of praise for the play that he made. We don't know who he got the interception on. Could have been Kyle Trask. Could have been Ryan Griffin. It's either one of those guys. It's 50-50. You know, it's just guesswork at that point. But Nate Brooks did a pretty decent job there to make a play, get that interception, get that turnover. You know, we've talked about the cornerback battle and all the guys who are in that battle. Nate Brooks being one of those guys maybe he separated himself a little bit. You know, it's possible. Uh, basically, every single guy who's in that fifth cornerback, you know, job battle right now basically has the same amount of momentum. They're all basically neck and neck. Maybe you give a little bit of a nod to Chris Wilcox over the other guys since he's a seventh round pick. I personally would, but maybe Nate Brooks, maybe he inched himself a little bit further there in that race potentially. Another note to uh, make here is Kyle Trask threw a 45-yard bomb to Cyril Grayson during this practice, one of the more impressive passes of the entirety of OTAs up to this point. And Kyle Trask, yeah, he can throw the deep ball. Pretty interesting connection there at Cyril Grayson. I don't know if they're developing some type of chemistry. Maybe it was just, you know, one play thing where they just connected like that. Who knows? But uh, Kyle Trask, hey. He's pretty good. I'm just saying Kyle Trask is that dude. He's throwing those 45-yard bombs, and uh, seems like he's doing pretty good as well. Cyril Grayson, very interesting. You know, he always kind of pops up the past couple of years, right? He always kind of pump comes up, and it's like, hey, by the way, guys, I'm still here. I'm still a receiver. I can still catch passes. So, yeah, very interesting to see those two develop a uh, chemistry like that there 
in OTAs. Raven Green got a pass breakup, which was almost an interception at the end of practice. Raven Green had been with the Green Bay Packers for a couple of years. Now he's trying to get acclimated to things in Tampa Bay. He is a safety. He's got some competition for that backup safety job and also playing special teams. Javon Hagan has been getting a lot of praise from Bruce Arians as well as just other people in the Buccaneers organization and Raven Green said hey don't forget about me I can pass break up I can get an interception if I need to and uh, he showed that in this OTA's practice but still very stiff competition that I think is going to go for a while between guys like Javon Hagen, Raven Green and all the other safeties that are there. Grant Stewart and KJ Britt are playing literally the whole time KJ Britt relaying plays from Todd Bowles on the defense. He's got the green dot on his helmet. And KJ Britt, Grant Stewart, I mean, phenomenal guys, right? They're absolute beasts. They've been getting loads of praise in rookie mini camp during these OTAs as well. I'm very excited to watch both of these guys play. It's going to be wonderful. You know, I've seen a lot of people, especially Grant Stewart, you know, get a lot of praise from here on the YouTube channel, from a lot of media sources. And uh, now we're starting to see more of that praise go to KJ Britt as well. Both those guys, man, they're, they could be some really, really, really uh, talented dudes for this team. AQ Shipley has been working with Robert Hainsey every single day at OTAs. And AQ Shipley, he is a coach on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers now, I believe, full-time. So congratulations to him. He got a Super Bowl ring and he gets to stay on as a coach. He unfortunately uh, is retired due to injury. But if there's really anybody you would be wanting to work with Robert Hainsey on more of a personal level every single day, you would be hard pressed to find, uh, you know, anybody better than AQ Shipley. I mean, multiple year veteran in the NFL. I believe he played 12 years in the league. He's been to the playoffs before. He knows how to play center. He's been a starting center for many, many years of his life in the NFL. And now he's working with Robert Hainsey, who is playing center. This was established in rookie minicamp uh, continuity in OTAs. He is playing center. And AQ Shipley teaching him every single day. Yeah, sign me up for that because that is going to help out so freaking much for the development of Robert Hainsey developing as that center. I know Bruce Arian said, look, he's going to play all five offensive line positions, but his home is, you know, probably going to be that center position, if I had to guess. With Ryan Jensen's expiring contract after this season, of course, they want to bring him back, but it's nice to have that insurance policy writ with uh, Robert Hainsey and just continue to grow and develop him. I mean, you're going to have Shipley there. Ryan Jensen, I'm sure, can be a very solid mentor. Hainsey is getting a lot of really good teaching, and I'm very excited to see how he grows, not just along the whole offensive line, but specifically at center. I mean, he can be that dude. Uh, and then finally, guys, Jalen Darden. Yet again, we're talking about Jalen Darden, and it's more positive news. Has been getting a lot of work on special teams. Of course, we all knew this. You know, a lot of people thought, hey, kick returner, punt returner, Jalen Darden can do it all. Keith Armstrong said that he could be both the kick returner and the punt returner. Very interesting to make that distinction of saying, hey, he can not just punt return, he can also kick return. Now, there are different things to go into both a kick returner and a punt returner. You have to do different things, of course. So uh, for Jalen Darden to get that nod of approval, get that thumbs up from the special teams coordinator for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of experimentation, a lot of big testing and whatnot to see how Jalen Darden does, not just as a special team or, you know, in the preseason, of course. And throughout the remainder of these offseason activities, of course, J Jalen Darden is going to get looks as a special teamer. We all knew this was going to happen, but not only has, been, has he uh, been getting praise as a special teamer, there's been loads of praise for Jalen Darden just as a receiver point blank. So I'm going to be very, very glued on Jalen Darden for this upcoming preseason. How is he going to do? Not just as a special teamer, but also as a receiver as well. He's going to be one of the, you know most watchable guys I could assume in this entire upcoming thing. Him, Grant Stewart, KJ Britt. I mean, a lot. this upcoming rookie class, guys, I mean, pay attention to them because it's a lot of guys who are just with loads of potential. And there's also some surprises in there as well that we talked about in this video as well. Some returning guys who are even looking good. I mean, pay attention to these backups, guys. Pay attention to these guys who you might not even think to pay attention to because they can surprise some people. You never know who is going to make an impact. I can never, you know, say that enough times. I mean, you really have no idea who is going to make an impact at the end of the day. But anyway, guys, that is it 
for this review of day three of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers OTAs. What are your guys' thoughts? Overall, it was really nice to hear about some guys like Anthony Nelson, Grant Stewart, KJ Britt, Jalen Darden, and all the other guys that were talked about. Um, Seems like these competitions are going to be getting a lot more interesting as time goes on. Different guys are popping off every day. You know, maybe it's Nate Brooks makes a play one day. Maybe the next day it's Chris Wilcox. Maybe the day after that it's Cameron Kinley. That's just for the cornerback job. Apply that logic to all of these backup positions, and you are having some very healthy, but very important and very good competition, and it's going to make the uh, best of the best come out and really do what they need to do, and I'm all here for it because it's going to be great to see. But anyway, guys, leave me your thoughts about all this down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream, but until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.